Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now, this car is made by a company that has been involved in the leading edge of battery technology design and development for the last 28 years. They are the fourth largest car manufacturer in the world and are responsible for some 5 million battery powered cars out there, yet they're a company that many of you may never have heard of. The company is called BYD. And that car is the BYD Seal. And I think it's fascinating and we should take a look at it. Now I know straight away some of you are going, oh, it's an electric car ped, we can't bear it. But honestly, bear with me because this car is really interesting. First up, BYD haven't been making their own cars for that long, even though they've been developing batteries and battery technology for other manufacturers for years, 28 years, and they are really good at it. And this car has some very interesting battery technology, not just what the battery is made of, but also how it integrates with the car. But let's put that to one side. We'll cover the technology part in a moment. I think first up, the aesthetics of this car I think are really smart. I've had it for a week. It's drawn lots of comments from people because nobody has ever heard of that badge. They don't know what it is. People are like, what on earth is that car? I explain what it is. Then I get them to sit inside it and they're like, oh wow, this is really nice. It has one of the nicest interiors I've sat in for a long time. It's a stunning, stunning thing. And then let's just get some performance and you know the, the normal metrics you're interested in. It will do well over 300 miles on a single charge. It's got 320 PS, so it goes down the road really, really well. And then best of all, 45,000 quid, which if you compare it with something like a, a Model 3 Tesla, that is good money, really, really good money. I think the rear end styling is very sleek and very understated. This particular car, it has a really lovely deep metallic fleck in the paintwork. And I think the privacy glass and black pan roof just set the car off really nicely. Now, first up, boot space wise, the seal has a 402 litre boot. The opening aperture isn't massive, but it goes back quite a long way. And you've got a little bit of underfloor storage just here but they do the seal in both a rear wheel drive and all wheel drive variant. Now, if you have the all wheel drive variant, you don't get a front boot, but this, this one, this one's the rear wheel drive, so you do. So yeah, if you opt for the rear wheel drive version, you get a 53 litre storage space at the front, a front, or a fruit, depending on how you want to go. And the rear wheel drive offers the maximum range. So WLTP on this car is just over 350 miles. My gut feel says you're going to get quite close to that, certainly north of 300 miles. And the rear wheel drive car has 313 PS. Performance wise, that will get you to 0 to 62 in about 5.9 seconds. If you opt for the all wheel drive version, firstly, you lose the front because it's a twin motor setup. Your power goes up to 530 PS and your 0 to 62 time comes down to just 3.9 seconds. So it's up to you if you want more range, still sporty performance and a bit more practicality, rear wheel drive. If you want more sporty nature, go for the twin motor all wheel drive setup, but you will lose the front stowage. It's a windy day today. Uh, just a quick one on price. I mentioned about £45,000. I think the rear wheel drive version is actually about £45,500. The higher performance all wheel drive version is still only £48,500, which I think is a really good price point. But I want to talk about batteries because that's one of the things BYD are, they have a reputation for being a market leader in battery technology. Firstly, this car incorporates what BYD calls cell to body technology. What that means is the battery pack isn't just strapped into the car, it's a functional part of the chassis itself, an integral member of the chassis, which aids things like torsional stiffness and torsional rigidity. 
BYD also incorporates something that they call eight into one, but they've integrated lots of the systems that would normally be separate on an electric vehicle. But it's what the battery is made of, because the battery in this car is what's called an LFP battery, a lithium iron phosphate battery. That means there is no cobalt in the battery. Now, normally when I review an electric car, someone will get into the comments and start moaning about cobalt mining in Africa. You don't have to do that with this car because there is no cobalt in the battery. But what LFP batteries are really good at is, is thermal management. And what that means is they're able to deal with more charge cycles, they're able to deal with more temperature variations. And also there are some of the, if you like, the safety concerns of cobalt-based batteries you don't get in an LFP battery. And we'll see more and more manufacturers using LFP batteries in the future. It just so happens that BYD are there already with the battery that's in this seal. And I think that's very interesting. Let's jump in here and shelter from the wind, shall we? It's a very nice cabin, this. Helped by the full-size panoramic glass roof, beautiful airy cabin, amazing choice of materials. You've got a nice choice of kind of leather material. You've got an almost like an Alcantara, the way the door handles are sculpted into the speakers. And it's just... It's a lovely thing. Now, one of the things that BYD, all of their cars have got like a marine theme. This is a seal, they have a dolphin. So there's a very marine feel in here, basically down to the colors, the kind of blue seat color and the BYD writing in here. But then the other thing I mentioned about this cell to body technology where the battery is an integral part of the chassis. What that means is it has a completely flat floor. There's no transmission tunnel or even hint of one in here. Now. I do have very long legs. I often get comments about the fact that my, the, my thigh bones don't sit flat with the seat. That's just because I've got very abnormally long legs. But there's loads of space in here. It's a very, very comfortable place. But if you think it's nice in the back, it gets even better when you sit in the front seat. Okay, let's get the car going. Obviously, there'll be no now the startup screen's quite spectacular with the old BYD logo. All I would say is it does take a few seconds. You have to wait for that to finish before you can get in gear and be on your way. So if you're impatient, that might be a little bit annoying. But then you have two big screens dominating the dash. This main central screen here, uh, and then you've got a really nice little kind of instrument binnacle type screen in front with all the important information that you need. But it does have a bit of a party piece, I guess. If you're an oldie like me, you're in the YouTube generation, but if you're into TikTok or Instagram, you just push that button just there. And that central screen rotates into vertical format or rotate it back. <laughs> you might think that's a bit gimmicky. I quite like it. Um, you've got some amazing cameras on here as well. Um, and there's lots of different views. You can even go into that while you're driving along very useful to for parking in a tight space and those types of things and then you've got full uh, integration with your smartphone you do have to plug it in using a cable rather than wireless you've got two charge mats here for smartphones and then the main central part you do have a couple of buttons on here for your air conditioning but mainly you need to go into this touch screen and then you've got the little gear changer here the, the one thing i would say about that is the first time it's ever happened to me in any car is I think it's happened now three times. I've been driving along. I've either gone to touch the screen or gone to grab my phone and I've just accidentally, like I've just done there, just brushed the, the gear changer and it's knocked the car into neutral. And then I've been driving along wondering why the throttle suddenly deadened up and it's not not doing anything the first time it happened i wondered if i'd gone into the the speed limiter uh, and it freaked me out quite a bit and then realized i'd knocked the car into neutral which i think is so great actually i don't know whether you just need to maybe have a, a slightly more forceful um, movement on the gear selector got a couple of uh, storage mats there for drinks you've got a big storage bin under here and all in all the driving position is really good these seats look fantastic my only comment about the seats would be they, they, they need just a little bit more side support, both 
at the top of the seat here and on, and on the bottom, you do kind of move around in the seat, both the top part of your body and the bottom part of your body if you're, if you're driving enthusiastically. So I just want a little bit more support, but I think aesthetically they look fantastic. I've also got another storage bin just in here. So it's a nice place to be. I can imagine some people will think that main centre screen is too much, but it's clearly a trend we saw started by Tesla, but I do like the ability to kind of change its orientation. And then just finally, the quality of material choice in here uh, is really, really top end. And I think for the price point, <laughs> I know I keep going on about it, but for an all electric car, you know, I know £45,000 for, still for some is a lot of money, but uh, for this segment of car, with this performance and range and interior specification, I think it's an incredible price point. And I know for a fact that it's got some of the mainstream manufacturers quite worried, actually, because there are, you know, thoughts that BYD could potentially even reduce the price of their cars even more to make them even more attractive. And that would be a real challenge for some of the more traditional car manufacturers. So next thing we need to do is take this car out for a drive. I was lucky a few weeks ago, I even got to drive one around the circuit at the Goodwood Media Day. So let's talk about what this car's like on the road and on track. See, little things. To do the washer jets is the left-hand indicator stalk, and to indicate is the right-hand indicator stalk. It's the wrong way around. If you're used to Japanese cars, then they'll be quite familiar to you. Now, my driving plans for this car have been hampered a little bit this week due to ill health. I've just been feeling so grotty. I've not really felt like going for a nice big long drive, but it's a nice sunny day, so I thought I'd take it for a drive and just talk through uh, the basics of this car. First up, it's very smooth and very quiet, and I, it's no great surprise with it being an all-electric platform. The throttle, though, is quite sensitive, so to drive smoothly, you have to really think about where your foot is uh, positioned on the throttle, because you can, you end up kind of not being smooth if you're not careful. It's, it's very delicate inputs will make quite a big difference to the car but its general road manners are very good i must admit i've driven it mainly in sport but there's a very easy drive selector you can go into eco or into normal in normal it just backs things off a little bit i'm guessing that's probably where most people will sit what it does do though is it changes your range significantly uh, so if we go into eco mode so we're now in eco mode and uh, I've got 92% of the battery left and it's indicating 316 miles. If you do go into sport mode, uh, it just changes that a little bit. That's 304 miles. So it's no great surprise. The more performance you want, you're gonna pay for that with range. Now I did mention about the range of the rear wheel drive variant, this variant. If you go for the all wheel drive variant, you get more power. The range does go down to about 330 indicated WLTP miles. So maybe you'd, you'd probably be around the 300 mile, maybe a little bit less in the real world. But yeah, normal driving conditions, it's just a very relaxing place to drive. But I did get the opportunity to drive one of these on track a few weeks ago. And I'm going to preface this next video clip by saying I don't think many BYD SEAL customers are going to track their car. It puts the car to the extremes of performance, into a place where a lot of battery electric cars really aren't happy bunnies at all. But let's see how I got on with a flying lap of the Goodwood Motor Circuit. Okay, so let me talk you through a lap of Goodwood in this BYD SEAL. First up, in terms of just general stability, you can clearly feel the weight. We're in an EV and it's only maybe the second or third time I've driven an EV on track. But it's remarkably poised through the higher speed corners. 
just in terms of outright acceleration it does feel a little bit like i've got a limiter or something set but that's fine it's wet and greasy and we're not here for a high performance lap speed or lap time record we come down here into no name just onto the brakes we brake hard enough to let the indicators you know the little flickers turn on which is always a good sign brake feels pretty good and then just the front end actually surprisingly good for such a big heavy car and it's got a really nice sprightly feel to it it's really good on the brakes nose in just constant on the power nice gentle inputs it's still a bit greasy here today come down now the lavant straight what we got now that's 110 120 miles an hour onto the brakes no idea what that noise is onto the brakes oh the pedal's gone a bit long there <laughs> Yeah, really good. Very interesting. I don't think many people who buy one of these are going to be putting it round a motor circuit. But if you did want to put it round a motor circuit, then actually it's surprisingly good. So there you go. It, a couple of things. I'm really not sure what that high-pitched whistling sound was. <laughs> uh, it sounded like there was a roof rack on the car. Um, uh, the car got very hot very quickly the drivetrain started to just reduce how much throttle input i could put in and then the brake pedal went a little bit long but to be quite honest that would happen to most normal road cars when you take them on track where they don't have uprated sports brakes but um, not many byd owners are going to put their car around a track but it did have a really nice feel through the higher speed corners it was very stable but i'm guessing it's more the road like we're on now where you will want to know its performance so this is the rear wheel drive version and it has a really nice feeling to it it's got a reasonable amount of pull out of the corners as i said it's it's over 300 horsepower so it's not like it's a slouch or anything and the all-wheel drive one will be clearly even faster than that but the suspension has a really nice compliance to it that makes the road surface smooth things out and it has a, a good amount of punch i've mentioned the comfort or the support in these seats for me it needs to be a little bit more when you are pushing on you do find yourself moving around them a little bit too much for my liking but down a nice bit of road there's a lot of fun now let's just quickly talk about range and charging i've mentioned that it will do north of 300 miles that's WLTP in the real world. So this car is showing a historic value of 32 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Now I really wish electric car manufacturers would standardize what they were gonna use because I'm used to miles per kilowatt hour. But if this car's got just over an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, my rough maths in my head, 32, kilowatt hours per 100 miles means that this is probably doing about 250 miles to a full charge being driven as a press car so i've got no doubts that you could increase that to getting close to 300 miles but you'd want to be for this style of battery pack you'd need to be really north of three so three and a half miles per kilowatt hour um, on this type of battery pack or more is going to get you that 300 miles of range there or thereabouts and it's one of those things the more electric cars you drive the more you get your mind out of miles per gallon and you start getting into electric measures of efficiency the car has an onboard 11 uh, kilowatt ac charger so at home on your wall box easily charge one of these things overnight uh, on a low cost tariff hopefully and then it will support DC charging or rapid charging up to 150 kilowatts. So you should get a kind of 20 to 80% charge in public on a 150 kilowatt charger in, you know, 25 to 30 minutes, and you're gonna be ready to be on your way. So again, when you consider cars like this, firstly, it's got very healthy range number, you know, of anything, anything near 300 or above 300, there aren't that many cars that will do that, but you'll get that back again quite quickly when you plug it into a rapid charger. And it makes this car really quite a usable proposition. Now remember, Peter, 
right hand indicator stalk to turn right are we gonna now nah, we're not we're gonna get well we are stuck behind a skoda yeti so I'll, I'll give you that that's okay let's pop up here um so we've got see a decent amount of pull up the hills it's a very pleasant car to drive this really very pleasant in any of the modes sport mode is the most responsive the most zippy um and a, a very impressive car i'd heard things on the great vine about byd cars having not great build quality and that's just not what i'm seeing in here at all the the material choice the fit and finish is really premium in here and it, it's way more premium a feel than the price tag would suggest when you see a car that's got over 300 horsepower it's got a range of 300 plus miles and it's all full battery electric and it's top spec there's not many things you spec on one of these you basically spec the color really of the wheels and a couple of other things everything else comes as standard and that's 45 and a half grand it's it's amazing and it's the, the last point i guess people are gonna say okay what about the dealer network well i had a search on byd's website today and you can see where all the dealers are in the uk my nearest byd dealer and service center is in southampton which is you know i i take my car down to portsmouth so it's only a little bit further than my porsche that is so it, it's not the most convenient but you know, I bought a Land Rover from Southampton and drove it down there for servicing, so it's not a massive issue. But I think that will probably be some people's issue, depending on where they live. There's such a car, a new car brand; their dealer network is still evolving. But yeah, an impressive proposition. Anybody who does the whole China comment thing, I can imagine that's going to come my way. All I would say is love them or hate them the chinese do technology really really well anybody writing a negative comment about china on their smartphone i'd suggest you look on the back of that smartphone to see where it was built because i'm pretty sure it will be china so you kind of have to put that to one side because honestly i think the ev technology that's coming out of china right now and the quality of the cars like this is really putting traditional established car manufacturers on the back foot and getting them worried and having spent a week with this car i can see why now anyway i'm gonna head home and try and get well but i hope you enjoyed that if you did give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to petrobed for plenty more content to come and i'll see you on the next film you take care drive safe see look you can just open her up on this bit of road Great turn of pace, great turn of pace, nice feeling car. <laughs> I really like this car. <laughs>